In this video, I would like to describe an example of thinking with Newton's first law. Um, but I'm going to start off by describing Newton's first law a little bit. So Newton's first law is a claim by Newton, Isaac Newton, and actually Galileo is the original sort of discoverer or the person who described inertia as a fundamental physics way of thinking about nature. But the first law of motion that's due to Newton, these laws of motion, is actually called the law of inertia. This is another name for it. And the word inertia Inertia just means difficult to change. If something's got, or some, as, some quality has a lot of inertia, it is very difficult to make a change to it. And if something doesn't have very much inertia, then it's somewhat easier to make a change, but changes are never free. So the law of inertia in terms of physics is about objects because we want, you know, Newton's laws of motion are about the motions of objects and how to change the motion of objects. But the law of inertia, Newton's first law, essentially says that every object is going to have a resistance to change in their motion. It's not a conscious decision, right? Objects don't have consciousness in general. It's not because of the activity or choice that an object makes. It's simply just a fact of the universe. It's a fact of the nature that we have that it's difficult, or it's not that it's difficult, it's that there is only one way to make a change to the motion of an object, and that way is by having unbalanced net force. So something that students often make the make mistake of, for example, this is such an obvious question that gets asked nearly by every physics teacher on tests and final exams is, is inertia a force? Is this resistance a force? And it is not. It's not a force. You use a force in, in a sense against this resistance, but it itself is not a force. Inertia, inertia is not something that you can turn off. But for example, a force, you can make a change to the force. You can try harder or try less hard. You can apply 10 newtons of force, zero newtons of force. But the thing that you can't get rid of is the fact that a two kilogram object has two kilograms of inertia. You can't turn that off. You can't turn off two kilograms worth of resistance to change in motion. And this is what Newton's first law of motion is about. So I, I said that I had an example. And the example is this. Imagine that you have a, a weight lifter, right? This is a person who lifts weights. And so what they're going to lift is a dumbbell. So I'm going to draw them. So here they are. They are mid squat. So these are their legs. And then their arms are like here. And then across their back is a barbell. So here are some big weights. Right? And let's say that this barbell 
has a weight equal to, let's say this person is very strong, and it's 300 pounds. So notice I'm not using the SI unit of force, but I am using a, a force unit, it's the pound. So 300 pounds. So if you look at the barbell, so let me just draw the barbell all by itself. Here is the 300 pound barbell. The earth down below and the barbell are having an interaction known as a gravitational interaction. And the earth down below is pulling down on the barbell with 300 pounds. Let's say the weightlifter, right, this person right here, the weightlifter is pushing up on the barbell. So let's say that the weightlifter pushes up on the barbell with a force. So this force is the upwards force, the push force upwards on the barbell by the weightlifter. And let's say they use 300 pounds of upwards force. This barbell is not going to accelerate because the net force on the barbell equals zero. 300 pounds down plus 300 pounds up adds to zero. This is the net force on the barbell. But this does not mean that the barbell is standing still. Actually, the barbell could be rising upwards with a steady velocity of, say, 0.0, or, sorry, let's, let's do a tenth of a meter per second. That's kind of slow, right? But, you know, barbells aren't lifted all that quickly by weightlifters. And this velocity would be steady. It would be a constant, steady motion of the bar upwards at one-tenth of a meter per second, right? So there is no net force, but there are definitely forces. But the forces are balancing, so there is no acceleration. But what if the weightlifter wants to transition the barbell from being on the way up to finally they are fully stood with the barbell on their back right and they need to slow the barbell down from one-tenth of a meter per second to zero meters per second. Then what they need to do is allow the barbell to accelerate. In fact, actually, we might use another word, decelerate. We need the barbell to slow down. So in order for us to have an acceleration, um, right, so that the barbell can slow down, We'll talk about a slowdown acceleration. What we need is to change something about these forces. So instead of them being balanced, right, the net force is balanced right now at zero, we need the net force to actually point downwards. We want the net force to point downwards because we want the acceleration to be down. We want the acceleration to be down because we want to get rid of the upwards motion. So one way to do this is for a short amount of time for the weightlifter to not use 300 pounds of force upwards, but to use something slightly less. Like what if the weightlifter only pushed upwards on the barbell by 290 pounds instead. 
the barbell still weighs 300 pounds, right? Because the barbell is, didn't change and earth is still below. So now the net force equals 10 pounds downwards. And this 10 pounds downwards might be able to cause this acceleration, right? And this is the sense in which the inertia is happening, right? You, you need an unbalanced net force or a non-zero net force in order to have an acceleration. But if the forces are balanced, there will not be an acceleration. And yeah, that's uh, an example of Newton's first law.